Hello everybody, thank you for joining me in today's video. Today's video we're going to be talking about Ina's Dream Barbecue Trailer. This is a part two of a video series that I'm doing on my channel. And in my last video I really failed to serve justice to the points I was supposed to discuss there. But in today's video it should cover absolutely everything because I dissected each scene into segments that we can go over and I'll show you the, throughout the whole process of, of all of the segments that I cut up so that we can dw dwell and imagine what's going on before the actual game releases. The beginning of the trailer we're met with the scene of the TV hall room and we get to see characters Ina has met on her adventure captured within each screen. The camera pans down revealing Ina and this very unique entity which is a meat fork utensil that is used to flipping meat on a grill. There we see a scene of Ina where her silhouette reaches out and tries to grasp the silhouette of the utensil. In the second scene, we get to see a new version of Ina that looks very unusual. This could be Ina the worker from the flash card we see at the start of the trailer. She is lying on the ground with a hole in her stomach from a shot through the gut. We can see the rifling that is etched into her body. Though she doesn't seem to react with the hole in her body, we can catch her getting a glimpse of the spatula ballerina for the first time. Ina then vigorously crawling, sweating from exerting her energy into dragging her body towards the spatula ballerina. Analyzing the scene for a bit longer, we can see the target practice dummies with spiral targets on the head and on the torso, which is possibly indicating that they've been shot. Later, we see Ina trembling while holding a practice dummy that hasn't been shot, probably realizing something very significant. She also has a strange orange substance around her lips of her mouth, which we don't get to see what it, that could be. In the third scene, we see mannequins reaching up, flying to the sky being. The sky being is holding a grill that has a cooking grate of a rib cage that we can see a spine through the middle of the seven ribs on either side. Later we see that sky being reaching down, pushing away the mannequins. As he does so, the grill gets suddenly red like it's hot and blaring with heat, like it's ready for cooking. In this fourth scene, we start off with a close-up of Ina's face. She's looking up and we can see her mouth chewing like it's a hypnotic, rhythmic motion that she's doing in response to being dehydrated and starved. We see cracks and contracts forming cavities throughout her face like ground soil that has been deprived of water for ages. Then it switches to Ina looking up, staring into the grid of peculiar megaphone cones in the sky her arms missing. For the background, red clouds layer on the grimy green sky, racing to the right, and we get to see a very dry, hot and arid landscape with red soil and piles of ground and rock. In the distance, we see a ridge line of a mountain range that extends far out, where the density of the atmosphere shows a light orange hue. Later, we see stuff falling out of the megaphone cones to the ground where Ina is jumping up and down in circles in a chaotic manner, signifying that she's expressing some sort of happiness and excitement. I speculate that it's food or meat because it bounces softly when it hits the ground. Rocks would just reflect and bounce off in different directions. The sky is now turned into a redder and darker hue. Then we get a close-up of Ina during the scene. We see her face, her mouth wide open with cavities throughout her face, her right eye is purple and her left is blue, a solid stripe of purple on her right and a solid stripe of blue down the left of her face. Finally we see that she's exhausted, breathing heavily and sitting in an odd position on the ground, licking up slightly with her hat casting a shadow over her eyes. A hundred of thousands of bullets rain down from the sky, from the megaphone cones, to the ground around Ina and around the surrounding area. In this fifth scene, we get to see a front profile of Ina with a very blank expression, glitching between two realities with flowers falling from the sky. From the TV hallway to the deserted landscape with Ina pulling her hand up in a finger gun position and shoots without hesitation. We can see a massive revolver behind Ina shaking before firing, lighting up the sky with a bright white flash, then an orange and light red hue of the explosion's expiration. 
During the making of this part 2 video, I got to look at the single's art cover on the Bandcamp page which Oliver Buckling composed and Amoya for the Aina Dream Barbecue trailer. We can see three variations of Ina. Firstly on the left we see this Ina's appearance is different from her normal blue and yellow we've seen in season 1, but she still maintains the qualities of season 1 Ina, but her hair is a bit shorter of an equal length and her left and right eyes are a bit narrower and flipped. Wearing a green cap, now she is white and red, with a light pink collared short sleeve shirt with red and pink striped suspenders. Secondly, we see an Ina in the middle, with a more round and fleshy body. Her clothing is more round and defined like her collar, surrounding her neck. Her eyes are rounded rhombuses with circular pupils. Her cap is greenish blue and is a very unusual form to see Ina this way. We can see on the right of her mouth, she's salivating like she's seeing delicious food that's making her very, very hungry. On the right, we see a version of Ina that looks more unhinged. Her skin tone is olive green and she has split cavities throughout her head with purple and blue oozing liquid through the cracks. Her pupils are pink and light blue surrounded by a void of darkness. The color of her cap is an olive green. Fixing our attention more on the background, we can see that there are bullets and flowers raining down from the sky. I wonder what food, bullets, and flowers have to correlate for some sort of meaning. On the sixth scene, we see a clip of the trailer of an interaction between Ina and this individual frustrated from missing a job opportunity, scratching the sides of her face and an odd thing on her face. When I was doing research on this video, I also found something interesting from a 3D modeler of the Ina project, Utu Neo's Sketchfab profile page. It's a character concept that Joel Guerrera made and had modeled by Utu Neo, designed and rigged for use of a reference model used to help the artist for the project. The model's name gives us a detail of what is going on with her face, coral. It's coral, coral glasses that are on her face. The background we get to see of a different angle. First got to see it in the trailer announcement and has a set of legs came up from an unknown red liquid substance that seems to be like an ocean or lake. The sky is cloudy and dark with mountain and hills seen in the distance. I speculate the amount of legs to be seen in the water are like crocodiles. Set foot in the water and there's a scary monster that'll gobble you up. In this seventh scene, we're greeted by a narrow canyon corridor. We see a bright magenta character running away, leading us to the clip of the canyon and a path that leads us on. We see on the cliff sides and there are big square holes like windows or corridors. We see several monoliths in the scene that are with hieroglyphics etched into the stones. The sky we see up to is of another surface with toppled buildings flowing with rivers and there's bridges and paths that lead to a large ship and a canyon. This could be what we can see when we get to a sour character. She doesn't seem to care and is irritated by the interaction scene in the trailer. We can see something interesting for a blip of a second. When we pause, we can see a glimpse of these two little peeps moving in their bag as she's moving around. Why I say that there are two little peeps is that there's a fragment from the announcement trailer that we get to see her dancing and smiling and being a little goofy. And there are these two little peeps tossed up into the frame for a second. These little details gives us more of a small insight into what this character is about and who they are. In this eighth scene, we see a clip of Ina tossing her arm up and down like it's an item. But the background is what mostly captures my attention. It looks like a cafeteria and the structure in the middle has a window with a shelf and a gate. There's an eye above it staring through the hole in the sheet of metal back at Ina. Like it's analyzing Ina's figure for measuring a portion of food to be dispensed to her through the opening of the gate. And this last and final scene shows a very bright and clear atmosphere with an open field of dead flowers and ones that are white and alive view here and there. There's a big building with four round cylindrical towers that surround a wider taller cylinder that make the building seem to be a hub of some kind. There are these hunched over older ladies who are 
pacing around the perimeter, walking around carrying an antelope on their back. These older ladies' hands are fused with the antelope, and the antelope has a particle effect on around the eyes and mouth. Why are they fused together? Are they using the antelope to survive? Could these be enemies? Are they an obstacle to avoid? Or are they just simply NPCs that walk around? Thank you for watching today's video. Hopefully you consider liking and subscribing uh, and leave a comment down below into the comment section about what you may speculate within Ina's Dream Barbecue before the game releases and just, just tell me anything. Uh, how today's video was pretty much anything I love I love getting feedback from all kinds and it really connects me with you and I'd love to continue to make for videos further with you guys and uh, this video was a joy to make and it took me about like a week and a half uh, about maybe like 18 to like 20 hours of like just getting like all of the scenes prepared and uh, a lot of um, UI edits and you know just all for the different windows and everything but it was totally worth all the hard work and effort for this video um, and the next one may I'll try something else and then kind of create something very unique uh, and more more flashy but we'll see you in the next video and y'all have a wonderful evening and the rest of your week.